Now, I can't give a class on cognitive psychology without talking about deductive reasoning, because there's been so much work on deductive reasoning and how people use and understand syllogisms. So first, what's deductive reasoning? Deductive reasoning is when you start with a couple of statements, a couple of premises, a couple of observations, and then draw a conclusion from those observations. You deduce a conclusion. And syllogisms are a way used in formal logic to assess arguments, what's a valid argument, what isn't a valid argument. So first thing here is a syllogism. If we make the statement, first of all, that all birds are animals, that's true, and all turkeys are birds, that's true. Then, conclusion, it follows that all turkeys are animals. True. Okay. Now, you can have premises that are true or false, but you can have conclusions that are not valid. You can agree about facts and statements and observations, and you can reason about them logically, or you can reason about them illogically. In other words, you can draw valid conclusions, or you can draw invalid conclusions. So there are a lot of different forms of syllogisms. Um, all A is B, no A is B, et cetera, et cetera. You can take a logic course to learn all about that. But let me just give you an example of a valid argument. You are a CSUN student. CSUN is a part of the Cal State system. So you are a student in the Cal State system. Reasonable, valid argument, no problem. Let me give you another one. Now you can see, hopefully you can see where things kind of go off the rails here. Some women are tall people. Well, that's true. Some tall people are men. That's true too. Therefore, all women are men. Whoop. Nope. Invalid conclusion, right? It's true that some women are tall and it's true that some men are tall, but that does not mean that men and women are the same. Okay. Right? Two premises, reasonable, but a conclusion that's haywire. Now, here's where I'm going with this. Can you recognize a valid conclusion if it's inconsistent with your beliefs? Or can you recognize an invalid conclusion when that invalid conclusion is consistent with your beliefs? And this is where we're getting specific about how do your beliefs influence the way you reason critically, your critical thinking. So truth is the accuracy of a premise or a conclusion and validity is the method that you use to arrive at a conclusion, right? So statements can be true or false, but the way you reason about them can be valid or invalid. So all cats are mammals. True. All dogs are mammals. True. Therefore, all dogs are cats. Invalid, right? So two perfectly good statements but the argument is invalid. So your premises can be true and you can still draw the wrong conclusion. You can still draw a conclusion that doesn't follow from the premises. That's illogical thinking. So just to review, we have something called confirmation bias. Actually, it's an umbrella term. There's a lot of different biases that fall under confirmation bias, but we are essentially blinded by our own beliefs. This is part of the reason we're in such a mess right now in the US. We tend to accept arguments and accept conclusions if they conform to our beliefs. And we tend to reject conclusions and reject arguments that are inconsistent with our beliefs. We do it without even knowing it. And that leads us into a whole lot of trouble. So let's see. Let's see if you can figure this out. Here's another syllogism. So the first premise, some professors have red hair. Sure. Second premise, some men have red hair. Sure. Conclusion, therefore some professors are men. Okay, premise one is true. Premise two is true. The conclusion is a true statement, but it's not a valid argument. 
And because the conclusion is a true statement, we know that some professors are men, it's hard for us to see the invalidity in the argument. It's hard for us to see the argument as illogical, but we know the conclusion is true, and so the argument seems valid. So why is this conclusion false? Well, if we've got red hair in the middle, right? Some professors have red hair, so that falls in this spot. And then some men have red hair, and that falls over there. But the circles of men and professors are totally separate. They do not overlap, right? So you cannot conclude that all, that you cannot conclude that some professors are men just because both prof some professors and both some men have red hair. In other words, you got the premises, but you can't, but the conclusion is invalid. The, the logic is invalid. It's, you can't get there from here. All right, we're getting closer. This is gonna, I'm actually taking you to an argument that is about vaccinations. Okay, let's, let's do another syllogism just so you've got this. Some professors wear ties. True. Some men wear ties. True. Therefore, some professors are men. The conclusion is true. We know that some professors are men, so it makes the argument or the line of logic feel like it's valid, even though that is illogical. Okay, let's try it again. I'm gonna use the same illogical argument, but now I'm gonna create a situation where the conclusion is cuckoo, and so now the argument seems nuts. Some scarecrows wear ties. Okay, second one. Some professors wear ties. True. Conclusion. Some scarecrows are professors. What? We know that some scarecrows aren't professors. So the whole the logic of the argument just seems crazy. It's like, well, that's easy to dismiss. But the first conclusion that some professors are men, that's an illogical argument too. But it's harder for us to dismiss it because why? The conclusion's consistent with our experiences in the world. So it's hard to see the illogic in an argument when the conclusion of the argument is consistent with your own beliefs. All right, now let's get real world and a little bit closer to home. You know that there's a lot of people who believe that the MMR vaccinations, that is the vaccinations that you give kids when they're around two years old to protect them from getting the measles, the mumps and rubella, some people like to make the argument that that vaccination causes autism. All right, but let's see about how they make that logical conclusion. All right, so premise one, those two kids have autism. Okay, we'll just state that that's true, fine. Premise two, these two kids have had MMR vaccinations. Okay, true. So therefore the MMR vaccinations gave these kids autism. Now that's actually an illogical argument, but it's one that many people believe. And so many people will accept this line of logic. If you fear vaccinations, then this line of logic seems logical. But I'm gonna replace MMR vaccines with teddy bears. And let's see what you think about the argument then. These kids have autism, okay. These kids have teddy bears, okay. So therefore, the teddy bears gave the kids autism. What? That's illogical. I mean, that's crazy. Yes, but so is it just as crazy that the vaccination gave them autism. But it's harder for us to see the illogic in the first argument, because there's always some doubt in the back of your mind. Maybe those vaccines really did give the kids autism. Vaccinations were no more likely to give them autism than their teddy bear was. That's the point. All right, right now there are a whole lot of conspiracy theories going around out there to try to help people understand what's going on in the world. And so the conspiracy theories have premises. Premises are okay, but if you believe the conclusion then the illogic of the argument 
disappears. You can't see how illogical an argument is if the end result of the argument is a conclusion that you believe in. So we don't change our minds because we can't understand when an argument is illogical. That's the problem. We see arguments as logical if the conclusion of the argument is something that we agree with, and we see arguments as illogical if their conclusion is something that we don't agree with. That makes it really hard to reason your way out of a dilemma. So our beliefs distort our ability to reason logically. So when you go around in the world these days in a world that's really complicated and unemployment is increasing and the pandemic is increasing and crazy things are happening, you need to understand that people are willing to accept crazy, insane logic. They'll accept things that make no sense if the conclusion is something that they agree with. Maybe the conclusion is e pluribus unum. Or maybe the conclusion is don't tread on me. Maybe it's we need to stick together. Maybe it's the individual is more important than the group. End result, if an argument is consistent with our prior beliefs, we accept the argument. If an argument is inconsistent with our prior beliefs, we reject the argument. And as a society, that's a really tough place to be.